Godzilla vs. Kong. This is my uh, spoiler review. I have a review up on my blog. Um, no spoilers. Uh, you can check that out on my blog, soundofbetterinmyhead.com. Um, this is a decent movie. It's pretty much what you, you're expecting it's going to be. It's just monster on monster mayhem and King Kong and Godzilla beating the crap out of each other and probably more scenes than you want of some humans that detract from watching the monsters beat the crap out of each other. Um, I mean, that's about it in two hours of that. Um, I, at least they didn't throw as much baggage to the human characters. Like, usually they got characters got divorces or got daddy issues or whatever's going on. All these subplots with these characters you just don't really, you know, get into. There's not that much of here. I think a lot of them are unnecessary. Um, the whole subsection with uh, Millie Bobby Brown's character, um, it's almost useless. I mean, the whole point of them is to discover that, you know, Apex is making Mechagodzilla and they very half-assly help beat him by, I don't know, they don't alcohol in the computer and it makes the thing's tail turn off for like two seconds and uh, Godzilla and is able to kick his ass with uh, King Kong's help. I think that could have been streamlined. Plus you got basically two comic relief, char relief characters and you didn't need both of them. You could have had either just, you know, um, Millie Bobby Brown's character go there on her own and figure this out, or maybe she could have met the other guy, met the other guy in the way. It was, it was a whole convoluted thing where she had to, you know, track him down and then convince him to join her. And it was just, it was all unnecessary to like the, the story they're really trying to tell. The main people thing was okay. Again, you got the evil corporation trying to get this sample of this blue energy, which they didn't even need a sample of it because all they did was kind of analyze it and they're like, okay, we can make our own. But it's kind of the same energy that Godzilla uses. So really you just need that. They could have just analyzed one of Godzilla's atomic blasts and I think they would have got the same energy signature. So that was just kind of a waste of time. I don't know. Um, like I said, the first Godzilla combat was decent. You know, they're more in Godzilla's element of fighting on in the water on, on ships. That was fine. This, you know, obviously a shit ton of CG. Uh, the main event in the city, it's, you kind of knew at this point that Mechagodzilla is going to show up. So you know that this fight's not the final bout. You know that like, these two are going to fight and Mechagodzilla is either going to interfere or he's going to show up and they're going to both team up and fight him, which is what happened. Didn't really care for the design of Mechagodzilla. I thought, um, I don't know, just looked like a big... CGI robot from a Transformers movie. It didn't really look like a good robotic representation of a Godzilla. I don't know if that makes any sense. But, and then there's this whole weird secret thing in the middle of the Earth, this hollow Earth thing, and apparently there's a whole civilization of Kongs that were possibly as smart as maybe cavemen. You know, they can make weapons, they made these giant doors and this throne room, and they fought some Godzillas or something at some point and they all died. I don't know. They don't, there was some pretty interesting world building that they just not, did not really get into. It's just kind of like, oh, no one else is here. Now let's go back and fight. And then, then it's just this giant fight in the city and it's like jumping off buildings and they, pretty much them just trying to destroy every building in CGI Hong Kong that they could. And I don't know. And then just the whole thing, Godzilla attacks this thing in Florida, which was never quite explain what he knew and what he didn't know about what was happening there but people immediately decided that Godzilla is now the enemy and I, I said it was just kind of a lot of the side plot stuff just didn't make a lot of sense if you thought about it luckily they would usually go to some big monster fight to distract you from that which is fine that's what the movie should be but I think you could have trimmed this down easily by half an hour get a nice hour and a half monster mash and get people in and get everybody in and out doesn't really leave anything for a sequel. There's no real big setup. Like, oh, this is this is gonna happen later, which is fine. Like, I don't feel like running out and having to see another monster movie after this. But you know, if they put a fun one out there, I'll check it out. So, anyways, um, I'm giving this two and a half out of five. 
I think that's just, it's okay. Like, you know, nothing spectacular about it, but it wasn't you know, a bad movie, unless you're expecting some, you know, kind of art or something. But other than that, um, that's all I really got. Um, still got my comic strip up on my, uh, on my blog. Hopefully I have some, something else to review here in the, in the future. So until then, thanks for watching.